Welcome back, everyone. It feels amazing to say this. The Las Vegas Raiders just went on the road and took down last year's top team in the AFC, the Baltimore Ravens. After losing in week one to the Chargers, everyone was freaking out, not Raiders fans, of course. But the NFL media never seems to give the Raiders the respect they deserve. There was so much talk about the quarterback situation, but Gardner Minshew came through with a solid performance. 30 of 38 passes, 276 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Let's not forget, the team was down 23 to 13 with just 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter, but they turned it around, scoring 13 points to win the game. Devontae Adams with a touchdown and Carlson nailing two field goals. Talk about a comeback. This is also Antonio Pierce's first win as the official head coach. He was the interim coach last season, finishing five and four, but now he's proving he's the real deal. A couple of key things stood out in this game. Max Crosby, absolute superstar. He's been carrying this defense, which is looking stronger than ever. And then there's Robert Spillane, who's really stepping up and proving himself to be a top tier linebacker. Also, Brock Bowers, wow. People have been talking about him all summer, saying he could have easily been a top draft pick. Well, we all saw why on Sunday. Brock Bowers is a game changer, possibly one of the best offensive players from the NFL draft this year. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into everything Las Vegas Raiders, but before we get started, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for daily content on the Raiders and the NFL. Let's aim for 100 likes on this video. It would mean the world to me. Apologies for the delay in putting out a Raiders video since Sunday's big win. I've just moved to the Tampa area, so things have been a bit hectic. But let's get back to it. The Raiders are coming off an impressive road win against the Baltimore Ravens, and their next matchup is at home against the Carolina Panthers. We've been saying it all summer. If Gardner Minshew keeps playing like he did on Sunday, this team is on track to win 10 games. The playoffs? Absolutely within reach if he maintains that level of performance. Let's talk about Brock Bowers again. He's been nothing short of incredible, and he's still a rookie. You've essentially got him for free for the next four years, and he's already making NFL history. In just two games, he's racked up 156 yards, which is the most by any rookie tight end in their first two career games. He broke a record set by Hall of Famer Mike Ditka way back in 1961. It's crazy to think that 156 yards can break such a long-standing mark, but it goes to show that Bowers is the real deal. I came across a great article by Derek Klassen on The Athletic, where he did a deep dive into how the Raiders are utilizing Bowers and why this is just the beginning. He even compared Bowers to NFL stars like Travis Kelsey, who is widely regarded as the best tight end in the league. There's no doubt that Bowers has the potential to be a game changer for the Raiders. Brock Bowers is already drawing comparisons to some of the NFL's best tight ends, and it's easy to see why. Take Sam Laporta from the Detroit Lions last season. He had an incredible rookie year. People are comparing how Laporta and Travis Kelsey have been used throughout their careers to how the Raiders deployed Bowers this past Sunday. A perfect example of this was in the second quarter. The Raiders isolated Bowers on one side of the field, splitting him out like an X receiver. On a 12-yard play, Minshew delivered the ball perfectly to Bowers' chest for an easy first down. It's the same kind of isolation play that Kelsey and Laporta excel at. These tight ends can dominate because cornerbacks aren't used to guarding players like them. And the way the Raiders, especially offensive coordinator Luke Getze, used Bowers was just a thing of beauty. My only concern right now? The offensive line's health and the run game, and those two issues are definitely connected. But there's a bit of good news. The Raiders are going up against the Carolina Panthers this weekend. Now I do think the Panthers will come out fired up. Bryce Young just got benched, and you know how teams sometimes bounce back with extra energy after a big change like that. Even though it's the same head coach, Dave Canales, in just his third game as an NFL coach, Carolina could have some extra fight in them. Their first two games and recent seasons have been rough, so they're going to want to prove something. But even with all that, the way the Raiders are using Bowers like deploying him on screens shows they're setting him up for big success. We didn't see anything too wild when Brock Bowers got the ball on screen plays, but that's not the point. The plan is in place, and the Raiders are setting him up for even bigger moments throughout the season. If you watch the film, you'll see how high his football IQ is. One play in particular stood out towards the end of the third quarter. Gardner Minshew was in trouble, scrambling to find someone open. And there was Bowers, finding a gap in the defense, making a veteran move despite being a rookie. 
Pair that up with Devontae Adams coming off a stellar game, and you've got a winning combination. Just feed Adams the ball, feed Bowers the ball, and let them work their magic. We've talked about this all summer. The Raiders' wide receiver room is stacked. Even before Bowers joined, you had one of the best in the game, Devontae Adams. Defenses can't double-team him because you've got Jacoby Myers, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the league. Plus, Trey Tucker brings serious playmaking ability after a promising finish to his rookie season. Adding Bowers into this mix is huge for the Raiders. But, as I mentioned earlier, the offensive line is a concern. Gardner got sacked five times, and the running back room is a bit of a mess. I'm watching this closely, especially since I drafted Zamir White early in my fantasy football league, expecting him to play like he did in the final four games of last season. Unfortunately, with the O-line struggling, White only had nine carries for 24 yards. People are criticizing him, but we all know Zamir, he's a beast, and he'll bounce back. But here's the thing, you can't keep running the ball 17 times for just 27 yards, averaging 1.6 yards per carry, and expect that to work the rest of the season. That's why I'm excited about playing Carolina this weekend. They're not on the same level as the Raiders offensively or defensively, so it's a good chance to bounce back. Let's talk about the defense for a minute. Max Crosby, what a beast. Everyone's been talking about this moment that went viral on Sunday. Crosby gave Gardner Minshew a pep talk, grabbed him and said, hey, we got your back. We need that Washington State Gardner. And Minshew responded with, you're right. Let me whip that up real quick. That's the kind of leadership and energy this team has right now. Crosby is easily one of the best defensive players in the entire NFL. He had six tackles, two sacks, four tackles for loss, and even a pass deflection. The guy is unstoppable. Then you've got Robert Spillane, who had an unbelievable game with 10 tackles, including a huge interception. The defensive line, led by Wilkins, and the defensive backs are holding their own too. This Raiders defense is looking strong. It's funny though, after losing in week one to the Chargers, everyone, except Raiders fans, was overreacting. But hey, it's just week one, and now we're seeing what this team is really made of. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for daily NFL and Raiders content. Drop your score predictions for the week three game against the Panthers down in the comments. See you soon.